once and for all. Here we are, gentlemen, our fair city of Hempstead. And there's Bradfield, 20 miles away, our rival. Sure, we're twin cities. Perhaps we are a trifle smaller, but I think our brains are larger. <laughs> <laughs> They're building an exposition. We're building an exposition. Gentlemen, this is a fight. We've got to face the fact. This is a race against time. And time marches on. You wanted a headline? How do you like this? Four columns on page one. You can't buy that space. <laughs> this is what I call action. Action? It's a press agent's dream in black and white. It's unnatural. You promised my own exhibit personal publicity. You'll get it. I talked to him first. You promised well, me. Gentlemen, one at a time, one at a time. I'm only your press agent. I don't own the newspaper. What's going on with the other exposition, Jimmy? They're working like maniacs. They've got ten men to our one. If we want to open first, we've got to step on it. How soon are they going to open? I don't know. I haven't been over in three days. I'll run over now and check up on it. But gentlemen, don't worry. Nobody ever outsmarted a Maxwell, not even a Maxwell. Jimmy, what do you think of my new Hispana Suiza? Fifteen gallons of the mile. Well, where's the rest of it? Oh, I don't get that. I'll make the last monthly payment. Boy, there is a hunk of car. Well, I hope it holds together till you get over to Bradfield. We gotta find out when they're gonna open. Oh, gee, well, why don't you go? No, I'm too busy. Listen, Jimmy, the last time I was over there, they told me they would break my neck if they caught me hanging around again. That's something to look forward to. Huh? All right, I'll go, I'll go. But remember, if anything happens to me, you're to blame. Get going. Nothing to get excited about, gentlemen. When we get going full blast, what Hempstead is doing will look like a county fair. And that, gentlemen, concludes the business of this meeting. Mr. Murdoch, what about this? 100,000 expected at opening of Hempstead Exposition. Now they're getting all the breaks. Where is our publicity man? There's nothing to be alarmed about, gentlemen. Yes, where is this Joe Allen you've been raving about? Will you please, will you please leave this to me, Jeff? We're about to open. Why isn't he here? He'll be here any day. But he's been shooting me ideas from the east, and I'll use them at the proper moment. Now, don't worry about Joe Allen. That fellow's dynamite. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Murdoch? Yes? What can I do for you? I'm Joe Allen. Joe Allen? Oh, I know. You were expecting a man. Naturally. What nonsense is this? Nonsense? Well, surely you didn't think it nonsense when your friend at the Bankers Trust recommended me to you. But Tom didn't say you were a lady publicity man. I mean that. I know what you mean, Mr. Murdoch. But as Mary Jo Allen, I, I just couldn't get a break handling big time publicity, so I dropped the Mary, and since then I've handled, if you'll pardon my saying so, even bigger jobs than the Bradfield Exposition. Well, let's get to work. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to see the publicity lineup, so thank you. Sit down. And uh, their stuff, too, if you have it. Mm -hmm. Who is this genius who's getting them all this publicity? Oh, Jimmy Maxwell, a local fellow. Jimmy Maxwell, huh? You're not getting any play at all. Hempstead's getting all the breaks. Oh, we don't have to worry about them. Are you sure? I think I'll do a little snooping.
I suppose you see what almost happened to you. I could have stepped out of the way if you hadn't yelled at me. You might have been killed. I hate self-appointed heroes. And I've never been keen about girls who go around gaping at buildings. Just look at yourself. Mind if I take that dirt off your chin? Funny thing about women, 99 out of 100 have a snooping complex. You must have done a lot of snooping yourself to find that out. You see that sign? I don't believe in signs. I better get you out of here before something else happens. Let's ride. Well, this is the end of the line for you, my little rice pudding. Get out and go home. I don't you hang around the fairgrounds so much, Ginger. It's a very bad environment. Now, get out and go home. No, I'm going to ride around with you. You can, Ginger. I have a lot of appointments. Listen, Buzz. There might be some newspaper photographers around, and they'll take my picture and put it in the paper, and it'll be good for my career. Your career. Ginger, why don't you give yourself up to Ripley? Do you know Ripley? That's wonderful. You can introduce me to him, and he'll put me in his show. Ginger, my darling, if you have one little brain cell left in that head of yours, will you please use it? I've got a job. You have? Where? Honey, come here. You remember me? I'm Buzzy, your little boyfriend, and we go around together, we do. And I have a job, a very big job. I'm a guide here at the exposition. I have to go through all these big buildings and study them so I'm able to talk about them. <laughs> Buzz, you're so silly. How can you talk about those buildings? They haven't done anything. Well, neither have I, but I had to get you. Now, get out and go home. No. Go on, get out. No. Ginger, get out and go home. No! Oh, Ginger, the car won't stand it. No! Oh, Buzz. So sorry. It came off so easy. You're always wrecking something, including myself. All right, you stay. I'll go. Buzz, I didn't mean it. Wait for me. Wait for me, Buzz. Buzz. Can you go back to the car? Ah, oh, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Where have you been? Don't yell. I'm not in the mood. All day we've been rehearsing those three crazy musicians that you hired. What happens? Well, what happens? Nothing. When you stop all this worrying, Rudolph, I'll whip these three guys into shape myself. Yeah, I like to whip them into something. Now, do you see what you've done? I should have been here rehearsing them, getting them ready for the big opening. Oh, Buzz, I can help you. You don't need them. I'll play all three of their parts. Listen, my little coffee pot. Just remain here quietly until I finish, and don't be a bad girl. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Journey much too short. Well, how do you like it? This is my big opportunity. Here's a pass. Now you can come and go as you please. You don't know how much this means to me. Well, so long. Oh, oh, what lovely music. That's one of my pet ideas. Mind if I see how you pet an idea? Sure. <laughs>
you find out? What did I find out? Plenty. They can open their fair in a couple of days. If they like. Who told you? You'll never guess in a thousand years. Jimmy Maxwell. Jimmy Maxwell? <laughs> yes, I've got it in writing. There, look. He thinks I'm a school teacher. A pass? Yes. And I'm going right on playing school teacher with him. <laughs> That's rich. Uh, have the gentleman come in, please. Yes, miss. I hope you approve of my double. Your double? You'll see. Oh, Mr. Murdoch. <laughs> I, Mr. Churchill. I have something that will prove most advantageous to your exposition. I would like to present a series of lectures on how to preserve the body beautiful. Uh, Mr. Churchill, we're not interested in that. Uh, you see, for certain reasons, I've got to stay out of the picture. And I want you to impersonate me. Be Joe Allen. How could I do that, Miss Allen? I'm not a woman. The name is all you need assume. My dear, if you'll pardon me, the whole thing smacks of chicanery. <clears throat> it, uh doesn't seem uh, just uh, quite ethical. We'll pay $18 a week. I couldn't consider the role of an imposter. How about $25? Well, in that case, you might persuade me to uh, affect the non diplume Congratulations. From now on, you're Joe Allen. Mm. And this is your office. My, uh, my office. Well, well, well. Well, that's that. What's the idea? Maxwell told me he's got a colossal stunt planned for the opening. Now, I've got to find out what it is. The sponsors have had me on the carpet all morning. Take a look at this. Yes, I know. I just read it. The Hampstead Exposition opens tomorrow. Now, we could have opened three days ago, but I let you talk me into waiting. We'd let them get the drop on us. Well, don't you think it's a good idea to wait and see what they have to offer? There's an old saying, you know. It isn't who starts the race, it's uh, who wins it. Yes, I know, but what am I going to tell the sponsors? Shh. Leave that to the school teacher. <laughs> I sent out they had to come. You haven't seen anything yet. I believe you. Oh, those are seats on the cheap one right in the first room. We'll be able to see good. Hello. Look at all the people. Isn't that wonderful? They really hurt each other when they fight, Buzz. Well, don't get so excited. Just sit down quietly and I'll be right back. Oh, Buzz, can I go with you? No, honey. This is my big night. I've got to announce a prize fight. Maybe I can get to do my dance between the rounds. Ginger, if you ever mention dancing again, Oh, I... Buzz, don't let them quarrel tonight. All right, honey, here. Eat your peanuts quietly and nobody will ever notice you. Hey, Murdoch! Here's a guy I'm burning plenty. Nice little opening, Jimmy. Oh, it's all right. Uh, Miss Wilson, Mr. Murdoch. How do you do? Miss Wilson, let me present Mr. Allen. Joe, old man, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. No. You've lost a little weight, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. How do I been kid? Oh, uh, there, uh, fine. Good worker, Alan. Smart boy, fast thinker. Uh, how do you like the opening, Mr. Allen? Hmm? Well, if I might be permitted to say so, it is the elixir of super showmanship. <laughs> yes, the quintessence of achievement. Quintessence. Quintuplet. I'll have them down here tomorrow. Well, so long, Mr. Murdoch. So long, Joe. Goodbye, Goodbye Miss uh, uh, Miss Wilson. Ah, uh, you, you. Nice work. Have a cigar. No, thank you. I don't chew.
will be described to you, blow by blow and jab by jab by the three radio rooms. The broadcast is brought to you through the courtesy of Silch's Hats. Their stores are everywhere. Silch's, the hat that every man should wear. Referee, Charlie Randolph.
How can I visualize my ideas when you don't give me a loud bark? Oh, what kind of a dog is this? A bit of a Pomeranian, sir. Oh, I do not want Pomeranians. I don't want a little dogs. I want big dogs. I want big barks. <coughs> ah, that is much better. I feel in the moon now. Right Rachel. you are, sir. I thank you. I see, uh, put that down. I see 450 white hunting dogs uh, barking something colossal. Uh, but supposing I can't get all white dogs, sir? Oh, get ostriches. Oh, now you get me out of the, my mood. Pardon me, sir. The ladies have done their attire for your approval. Oh, I thank you. Bring them in. I put him in a box with those kind of costumes. Well, I should answer. Oh, more complication. More complication. Hello? Yes, madam. Telephone for you, sir. Oh, oh yes. Hello? Yeah. This is Rosero. Hello. What are you, darling? I'm down in Bradfield, Texas, getting their exposition ready to open. And we want you to come down and help us open it with a bang. Bring my show down to your fair. Sure I will. Great. How much? Oh, Rosie, I want you to do me a personal favor. Go easy on the price, huh? For my little friend, Joellen, I'll do anything. I'll cut my salary in a half. Is that all right? Oh, that's swell. I'll let you know by wire. Goodbye, Rosie. It's all right. We can get him. We can? Mm -hmm. How much do you want? Only $5,000. Fine. A day uh, for 100 days. Half a million. Oh, well, he's cutting his price in half. That's because I'm a friend of his. The government mint is in Washington, not Bradfield. That's out. We've got to get an angel to back us. Surely there's one left in Bradfield. I've made everyone out here give up his last dollar. Can't you think of anybody else? Not a soul. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, not a chance. He's hopeless. Have you got any money? Tex Connolly could raise four or five million in a pinch. Oil. Oh, Pop, you should have been at the opening of the exposition last night. No use wasting your breath telling me about one of them carnivals. And I don't want to hear you've been hanging around there trying to be an actress. One of these days you'll see my name in electric lights that high. People will follow me for my autograph. My picture will be on washing machines, ice boxes, corn medicine, sardines. Hang around them carnival fellas and your picture will be in the sheriff's office. Get me the Tex Connolly. Hmm? Here you are, sir. Come on, time's a wasting. Hello? Yep. It's for you, Mr. Tex. Hello? Oh? Oh, Murdoch, hi. Sure, I'm always interested in a proposition to make money. Rosero? No, I never heard of it. Why, you're a plumb loco, man. I wouldn't have no hand in that for all the oil in Texas. Put that away, handsome. Imagine that consigned fool wanting me to finance one of them leg shows for five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, don't be such a miser, Pop. What's five hundred thousand dollars? You finance Rosero, I'll be the star. It makes it all so simple. You don't have to worry about my picture being in the sheriff's office. I'd spend five hundred thousand dollars to keep you off the stage. Can't you think of nothing else but play acting? What would your ma have said? <laughs> you should know after all the things she called you. <laughs> Well, Connolly was our only hope. But with or without Rosero, we've got to open. You can't stall any longer. You should have gone to see him. Oh, forget Connolly. How can I forget five million dollars? Do 
draw up a contract and wish me luck. I'll get his name on it or get shot crying. Okay. Shine brighter in Texas than any place in the world. <laughs> Sounds like something discovered by the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not going to let the Chamber of Commerce take credit for my discovery. I'll show you. I wonder if it's really true that for every person in the world there's a star. I wonder. Maybe we're very old friends. Oh, short acquaintances of some 2,000 years. <laughs> a comet swept down the Milky Way, and I was there to yank you to one side. Let's look for us, huh? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, way up in the heavens where you are, oh, shine from above. Oh, I feel that I'm falling in love. Twinkle, twinkle in the sky While I give romance another try Oh, shine, silvery light Oh, I feel that tonight is the night Confidentially Does she care for me? Did I hear you say That everything's okay? Oh, that's all I want to know Twinkle, twinkle, little star Way up in the heavens where you are, oh, shine from above. Oh, I feel that I'm falling in love. Twink, twinkle, little star. Way up in the heavens where you are, oh, shine from above. Oh, I feel that I'm falling in love. Twinkle, twinkle in the sky. While I give romance another try, oh, shine. Silvery light, for I feel that tonight is the night. Confidentially, does he care for me? Did I hear you say that everything's okay? Oh, that's all I want to know. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, way up in the heavens where you are, oh, shine from above. Oh, I feel that I'm falling in love. Oh, hello, Mr. Murdoch. Yes, I'm going to meet Mr. Connolly tonight. Jimmy Maxwell arranged it. Isn't that sweet of him? Oh, uh, I, I can't talk any longer. Oh, don't worry. That contract will be on your desk tomorrow. And signed. Good night. They're lovely. I'm glad you like them. Are you ready? I thought perhaps we'd have time for a cocktail. All right. If I'd seen you this way the first time, my guests would not have been school teachers. <laughs> it was nice of you to ask me to join your party with the Conleys tonight. Oh, but there's a catch to it. You're going to help me get my contract signed. <laughs> What do you want me to do, carry the dark lantern or do the stabbing? Neither. Just be charming, as usual. Thank you. Here's to you. Here's to the Lone Star State. One more champagne cocktail, please. More champagne? All right, but give me whiskey for a chaser. You know what happens, Pop, when you mix your drinks. 
When are you coming out to see our fair, Mr. Conley? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, spending the taxpayers' money on one of them carnivals. Oh, it's not a carnival, really. It's an exposition of great historical value. We're mighty proud of the history of our state, Miss Wilson. You should be. Well, my own grandfather died in defense of the Alamo. Now he... Oh, Pop, you're going to start that again. I've heard it a million times. That's just the trouble with you young people. You got no reverence for your ancestors. All right, Pop, all right, all right. Come on, Jimmy. I want to talk to an Indian about a blanket. <laughs> we'll see you later at the table. I bet you've got real pioneer blood in you, Miss Wilson. Oh, just call me Judy. All right. You call me Tex. All right. Tex. I want you to put this over, Jimmy, for the sake of my future. Yeah, and mine. I want to show Buzz that I don't need him. I know that song. You want to hear me sing it? Not now, honey. Some other time, huh? I did what you wanted me to. I got Pop to come here so you could talk to him about Rosero. Now you've got to listen to him. All right, all right. I love to listen to songs of romance on the radio. Beautiful musical, how it enchants me when lights are low. But when I go out dancing, that's when I must have rhythm. And when I must have rhythm, Love to dance to rock, pizza, pizza, la da to that little odd rhythm, la di a di a la da, pizza, pizza, la da to that little odd rhythm, la di a. It's a swingy thingy that should to start, a tom tom beating in your baby's heart, rock, pizza, pizza, la da to that little odd rhythm, la di a di a la da, pizza, pizza, la da to that little odd rhythm, la di a. Tooney full of magic charms to keep your honey happy in your arms. It has a sweet train, a sentimental jingle to shoot the blues. And there's a heat train, puts a little tingle into your shoes. La, tita, tita, la, da, to that little odd rhythm. La, di, a, ri, a, ra, la, tita, tita, la, da, to that little odd rhythm. La, di, a, if you want your baby in the mood for love, nothing better than a chorus. It has a sweet taste. 
your father to sign my contract, you will be a star. Oh, Jimmy, come on. Did you listen to it? Pop, did you hear it? I was great, wasn't I? I'm practically a star. Say, what's wrong with him? Oh, thinking to Sam Houston, I guess. Oh, Pop, look what you've done. All my whole evening. Come on, let's go home. What? If Mark could only see you now. Uh, well, can I help? I... Oh, that's all right. I can take care of him. Good night, Judy. Good night, sir. He had a wonderful time. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I can stand a breath of fresh air myself. I'm sorry I let you in for all that. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You surely did your part. I don't know another girl that will let her evening be spoiled just to help a fellow out. Think nothing of it. It'll be a cinch to get him to sign that contract in the morning. Does signing that contract mean so much to you personally? <laughs> Does it? It means the difference between success and failure. When I put that over, I'll throw my hat in the air and say, Jimmy, you're going places. Well, you'll go places anyway. Two weeks ago, it meant everything to land it for myself. Now I want it for an entirely different reason. <laughs> After we sign with Zero, all I want to do is to get a peek at Murdoch's face. <laughs> it's in the bag, kid. Hello, Mr. Connolly? Yeah, this is Jimmy Maxwell. You remember last night? Sure. I hope you're feeling better today. Who said I was feeling bad? Well, what do you want? Well, you know, we kind of got separated last night. And I want to talk to you about backing the Rosero show for the Hampstead Exposition. Smear it on plenty. Rosero, Rosero. How many places do they want that fella? I signed one contract last night. Last night? Yeah, for Bradfield. With your girlfriend. Girlfriend. Now, I don't want to hear no more about contracts. But, Mr. Connolly. Hello? What happened? What's the matter, Jim? Oh. Inhale three times, exhale three times. Now, run around the table once. <laughs> And keep your mind happy. That is the path to the body beautiful. Now, <clears throat> now touch the floor with uh, your fingers. You, do you really think this will make me beautiful, Mr. Allen? Well, should it be, Gloria. My system never fails. <clears throat> Allen, I want to talk to you. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Imagine seeing you here. I was just giving my secretary a few lessons in how to preserve the body of beautiful. <laughs> Ex Connolly oh, told me he signed a contract with Judy Wilson. Where is she? What's she got to do with this outfit? Who is Judy Wilson? Well, <laughs> I'm not. Oh, a funny guy, huh? Where is she? I assure you, I have no idea where, nor... Uh... Listen, you lily-pussed, white-livered phony. I don't mind you topping me in a business deal as long as it's on the up and up. 
I only thought I was going to sock Joe Allen in the jaw. Now I know I'm going to. And now you're making a dreadful mistake. I'm not Joe Allen. Now, don't you strike me. Honest to goodness, I'm not Joe Allen. I'm only getting paid to uh, act as Allen. Make a skunk out of yourself for a couple of bucks a week. Well, it was only a temporary arrangement. Here, she's Joe Allen. Jimmy, let me tell you how all this happened. I've been looking for you. Don't bother. I didn't think you'd do this to me. Oh, I didn't mean to. It was my job. You said it was a business deal. Never no I... mind. Skip it. I have just tendered my resignation. And that's final. Come on, Jimmy, don't take it to heart so much. That's the third cup of coffee that you didn't drink. Look at me. You know how I feel? Look at me. I feel like the nights and the days of old when kings were kings and queens, they didn't work either. And regarding Ginger and myself, I am the monarch. I keep her under my thumb all the time. All the time. Jimmy, listen to this. Cedar Rosero, whose glorified girls are the sensation of the theatrical world, will arrive today by plane from New York City. Huh? Contracts will be signed immediately for our giant spectacle to be presented at the Bradfield Exposition. Come on, let's go. Where are you going? Come on. Oh, I haven't finished my coffee in... Hempstead, 324. What'll I talk about? I'll tell you what to say. We've got to stop them from meeting Rosero. The reception committee's waiting, Mr. Murdoch. Well, that's fine. Hello? Ask for Murdoch. Let me talk to Mr. Murdoch. Who's calling, please? Who's calling? Rosero. Yes, you. All right, I'll try, I'll try. This is, uh, Mr. Rosero speaking. Mr. Rosero's on the phone. Hello? Ask him why I didn't meet you. Well, where are you? Is this the way you meet very distinguished visitors? You're in this town? But how did you get here? He wants to know how I got here so soon. Your private plane, you dope. My private plane, you... Of course. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Rosero. Where are you now? When can I see you? I will see you later in my hotel, after I've had a couple of hours of siesta. Well, you satisfied? That's pretty good. Now listen, you get the reporters and get them out at the airport. I'll see you there. I was expecting that. Hey, you owe me a nickel. Call off the reception. Naturally. 
got him going, kid. He's as good as ours. All right, I'll go and get the boss to draw up a contract. Hey, boys, boys, get that story in half an hour. That is beautiful. It reminds me of Park Avenue. Well, that's my fare, and it's all yours. Ah, uh, it gives me the great mood. I have the great inspiration. I'll take care of it. I've been working on a couple of angles. Now, tell me what you think about them. Your whole show brought out in airplanes. We'll form a Rosero squadron. Ah, that's marvelous. But I beg your pardon. That is my idea. They're already coming. It is then not so, gentlemen? Right you are, sir. I thank you. Well, to top that, We'll get a newsreel shot inside the plane, showing the girls... Yes, that... yes, in rehearsals. Diving off. In bathing suits. Right. <laughs> That's an intelligentsia's idea. I'll get that. Yes? Mr. Murdoch, here to see Mr. Rosero. Yes, sir. Mr. Rosero will be busy all day. Do you care to leave a message? Tell him I'll see him in the morning. Yes, sir. Just a newspaper, Pess. Before your troop gets here, I'll have one of the planes lost in Arizona. I'll get you a headline stretch from coast to coast and border to border with the name of Rosero splashed in red on every front page in America. My boy, you have the spark of genius. Why, every man, woman, and child in Hempstead will bow to the name of Rosero. Fine, Hempstead! Hempstead. Say, who are you, anyway? Who am I? Yes. Why, I'm the publicity director for the Hempstead Exposition. Gentlemen, I am being kidnapped. Do something. Get the police. You are an imposter. But don't you see, Mr. Rosero, we need you in Hempstead. You need me, yes. Everybody needs me. But you're wasting my time. Look at Joe Allen. Don't you see? I am in the wrong place. I have imported you from England. Oh, what is the matter? If you come with us, we'll give you 50% of the gross. No one can top our offer. Think of the profit. No, 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 no. With us, you stand a chance to make more money than you'll make in your whole life. No. Why should I gamble? Oh. So the great Rosero's afraid to gamble. He has to have money to guarantee people coming to see his show. Huh. You're not great. You're just a name, no backbone. You lack the courage that made men like Ziegfeld, Barnum, Shakespeare. They were showmen. Throw him out! Lift him up! Throw him out! Exterminate him! Don't you see I am in trouble? We went home immediately. Take the bags. Go on. Don't you oh, see I am in trouble? I am in the road. Give over. Oh, 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 no. He's still. Oh. Sit him. Shakespeare. Barnum circles. <laughs> Yes, sir. Whiskey. Straight. But the maestro is not himself. Rosie. So, where were you? Why weren't you there? Don't you know I was almost kidnapped? Oh, wait a minute, Rosie. I can explain. No, no, no. It is too late now. I go home. I go home immediately. I quit. Gentlemen, back. Right you are, sir. You'll do nothing of the kind. You can't afford to pass up an opportunity like this. You'll stay right here and make a fortune. No, 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 no. I am finished. All right. All right. We'll go back together. I just walked out on my job. You? Why did you walk out? I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell Rosario. He will tell you. We're in love. That's right. Is he a nice man? 
you were to know he was just here. You mean that? Uh... Jimmy Maxwell. That lunatic! He's a swell guy. Love is such a beautiful thing, huh? Oh, Rose. Now, now, now. This is not the Joe Allen I knew. Now, listen to me. You cannot quit now. You got a lot of work to do. You got a lot of publicity. Come, come, come. Let's get busy. I can't. Oh, Rosie, don't you see? With our show put on for Murdoch, that's Jimmy's finish. It's come. It's come. My show is here. Oh, this is beautiful. My show is here. Beautiful. Come, gentlemen, come. Come. You, Maestro, can you give an idea like this? Yes. Please remind me to remember to promise you to raise your salary. Right, you are, sir. I thank you. Joe, Joe, look here. Come, look at this. Oh, come, come. Look. My idea. I've spent four days searching for Jimmy. In fact, I've looked every place but the morgue. And I know he's not there because he hates the neighborhood. Gentlemen, we've got to find him. Maybe he went to Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia? Where's that? On the third page of the tourist guide. How should I know where it is? Well, look who's here. I've searched every club, jail, press room, and bar looking for you, young fellow. You should have looked where you wouldn't expect to find me. Where have you been? Ah, what does it matter? That's a fine thing. Just a minute. Get yourself another guy. Now listen, Jim, you can't do that. I'm through. Getting out. Washed up. Or do I make myself clear? Hold on, Jimmy. Now, don't get so excited. Let's talk this thing over sanely. So, you are here. Why did you walk out on my show? I never was so insulted in my life. What are you doing here? What I am doing here? You asking me? You want me to come? Here I am. The show's already to open. Where is my build-up? Where is my publicity? Say, what is this, a gag? Gag nothing. You sold him. Is this on the level? That's what we've been trying to tell you all the time. Come on, and let's go to town. <laughs> Ready, Mr. Rosero. I thank you. Now remember, my dear, this is one of the most wonderful moments of your life. Oh, thank you, Maestro. I know you're on the way for a big success. You, you really think so? I am positive. Uh, Maestro. <laughs> Look at that crowd. You certainly know how to pull them in. <laughs> yeah, don't I? So here you are, my little children. Now, don't forget to remember to give me that uh, Broadway touch. Yes, Mr. Rosero. And now go. <laughs> Pardon, sir. The arrangements have been made, as you desired. And here's the ticket, sir. I thank you. Music! <laughs>
choose right now between me and this so-called career of yours. What fun. This is my big chance. Now or never, Miss Connolly. Maybe you're right. All right, Buzz. I'll marry you. Hey, what are you doing here standing like this? Why don't you go to her? Yeah, here's a ticket next to her. You mean she's out there? Yeah, she's out there. And I am here. Account of you two lunatics. Why do I waste my time playing cupids?